let's, let's get going, guys. So first, I'm going to run over some logistics stuff. And then we'll talk about how we enter, how you guys are going to enter your poll data over the next many weeks. Um, and then we'll have some time for just discussing about approaches and what was totally horrible when you first tried it and techniques and that kind of good stuff. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, this is our, our shared website that you guys haven't seen yet because I just sent most of you guys the link in the last hour or so. Um, so before you go click on anything, just have a look up here. So this is, this is something we've been, uh, I've been evolving over the last couple of years. We kind of keep changing it every year. But hopefully it's, it's fairly okay now. So um, this is just a, a place for you to get information right now. In a month or so, once, once everything's done, instead of doing a traditional write-up where you guys have to write a paper and all that kind of stuff, you guys are going to do essentially a, a long blog post, a, a page that you guys can do collaboratively. So more on that later. But you're going to be able to put it here. You're going to be able to, to you know, use this shared space so everybody can therefore share and look at each other's findings and, and things of that nature. OK. Um, having said that, uh, I just sent everyone a link. So you guys are all editors on this website. So don't go being crazy and changing it all up or whatever. So we can wait for the editing part for a few weeks. But um, you can still get to it um, even without having to be an editor just by typing in the web address. And it's just coastalwiki.piratelab.org. And you can get to this. So if you guys lose your survey and you need to print some copies of the survey, whatever, you can, you can go to the site and you can find it whenever. So if you, if you are in some place that's not your house or whatever, you can, you can always get to it. Um, and I'll just uh, highlight this first part. So if you click the opinion poll place and you come down, um, if you click this, you can download the opinion poll uh, uh, this instrument. If you click this survey instrument, you can come down here. It's a little more detailed about what we've already sort of talked about, but a little overview about years past and then how we do this and then the summary of some of the question categories and again the poll instrument you can download it first thing you'll notice is this is a little teeny bit different than what you guys have in your hands so far it's fine the one you guys have is 13.3 if you look close it says this is 13.4 same exact thing we just added one more option so because the hurricane seems to have nuked the Bahamas, one of the questions that we said, one of, the, one of our questions about climate change there is, do you think climate change maybe played a role in, and there's a couple different categories, added one more slot that said, um, or sorry, no, sorry, that's not right, it, it's the rebuilding. Should we rebuild partly, completely, whatever? We added the Bahamas with Hurricane Dorian. So that, that's the only difference. If you guys have, still have surveys 13.3, go through those. Just go ahead and finish burning through those. But once you finish those, those five or however many you have, I have 13.4. So from here on out, we'll just use 13.4. So it's cool if you didn't have four, because obviously, if you gave someone the survey this weekend, it hadn't happened yet. So it's all good. But um, that's that. Next thing, uh, I want to show you a shared Google Drive that, that you guys, again, all have access to. So I've added everybody's CSUCI email address to this series of folders. And, and we'll get that on Canvas in the, ne in the next day or so. But I've been. I've been at funerals and dealing with a bunch of stuff. And so I, I apologize, I haven't had it up yet. But, but it'll all be up. It's, it's all up now, but it'll be linked through Canvas. So you guys all have access to all these documents. But in a day, you'll have it all also accessible through Canvas. OK, so what we're looking at here is um, uh, we'll talk about data entry next. But this is just general poll material, uh, general stuff. If we click on that, it's again, if you want to download the survey here, there's all these different places to get the survey, right? So you can download it there if you're wondering about the guidelines and stuff, that's, that handout is there too. Um, and some of you guys were like, where do we upload the human subjects thing? I hadn't had it up yet, but so this is the place where you guys can upload that PDF copy that, hey, here's my, here's my thing. I think Sean might have added a folder on Canvas. Um, either way, that's fine. And then this one, which is the main thing we're going to talk about today, which is the, the data entry folder. Oh, what the heck happened there? Shh, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> okay, so um, so what we'll see here is we'll see two different folders, and this is what's going to cause some confusion. So we've tried various things over the years. We've tried a shared Excel file through um, through uh, Office 365. We've tried various things, and it, and it just gets it gets kind of crazy. So this is this is our um, what we've we've tried in the last year or two that seems to work better. So what you guys have is if you look on this first thing, it says "Download me to your computer." So if I click on this, 
you're going to find an Excel spreadsheet. So you guys just go there. Um, when you're home, when you're on whatever, whatever device that you guys use for your data management, right? You can download that sucker and um, I would put my, I would change the title of this to whatever your name is. So download this folder, it's an Excel file and, and that's gonna be your master list. Okay, it'll make more sense in a second. Uh, you guys are gonna enter your data into that thing offline. We found it, when we try to do it online and multiple people get on the Google Doc, it's fine when there's four people on the Google Doc or five, but when there's 30, it farts and it like can't handle it and then things happen and everybody gets stressed and it freezes up and stuff. So it's easier for you guys to have your own copy, enter it there, save it, and then periodically when we have these due dates, you guys can just select your data, go to the shared Google sheet in your area and paste it in and boom, it's good. And you still have your original file. It's totally clean and not contaminated by anybody. If, so, if someone messes up and if somebody accidentally overwrites your data, no problem. We, we have your data. You can just go back in and repaste re your data in. Does that make sense? So, um, so for this guy, you're going to download this. And I would, you know, so download to your local drive if you want to do it on. You're welcome to do it on your own Google Drive if you want to do it that way. Or what I would recommend is download it to your local desktop or your hard drive or whatever it is, and then edit it there and just and save it. Um, and then once you're, once that's good, we have this other one here. It says paste merge data here. If I go and click on that dude, that actually is a Google Sheet. And that is, and we'll look at it in a second, but just real quickly, click on it. Everybody's, um, this won't make much sense till we go through it yet, but, but there's some example data in the top here, just if you get totally confused and you're lost and you're, oh my God, how does this go? You can look at some example fake data or data from a previous year, basically. Um, and then everybody has their own unique name and their own row. And so when you do your, your first five, you can go in here and paste your five in there and nobody's gonna paste over it, right? So nobody's gonna be expanding it and copy it over. We've tried all these things and it's caused all kinds of stress. So everybody has their own dedicated lines, paste your stuff in. If you only end up doing 30 surveys, just it's all good. You just leave the next 10 blank, it's all good. This way, everybody has their assigned place. Everybody has their assigned space and, and nobody will hopefully be copying over anybody's data. And then um, once we all get our data together, we're all gonna share our data. All of your data is gonna be pooled when you guys do your analysis. And then through the rest of the class, when you guys are talking, hey, how do people think about offshore oil drilling or whatever, recreation in the, in the coastal zone? We, we all have this shared data that you guys can look at. Does that make sense? And sort of the high level? Yay, nay? Okay. All right, so the next, let's, um, Go take, a, and so uh, just to be clear, everybody has your own logon, or when you guys log on through your, your um, MyCI access, etc., you guys should all be in here. Um, I also sent in that email I sent a, a few minutes ago, um, there's also a generic link that you could, if you just click that link and you're not logged in, you can see all this, you can download stuff, you just can't, you can't edit things. So, so if you're just stuck for today and you're just trying to look at stuff, you can click that, that view shareable link and you can see everything. You just can't mess with it. Make sense? Okay, cool. All right. Um, let us talk about um, how we're going to enter data here. Should we just name our um, certificate just our name? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Ideally, you guys last name first, and it'll be easier for Sean to check through to make sure everybody's got, got it. But as long as your name's in there, um, some way, shape, or form, it's, it's good. But it's easier if we just glance at it. Okay, so let's look at this. This is going to seem a little confusing and a little sort of cumbersome at first. Once we get to the data analysis, you'll see it makes it much, much easier for you guys. And it, it makes it really slick at the back end. But the entering might seem a little confusing. Um, so let's take a look at this. So uh, this is an Excel file. Uh, I'd say the, the, common, the most common problems that we get is sometimes you guys are using a PC or using a Mac or using a Chromebook or something and you download these files and the, these, this file, the spreadsheet is all good to go but because of the way your display is or your computer is formatted, sometimes things change and sometimes people freak out because it doesn't look exactly like this. It's all good. So one of the things that happens, for example, is um, sometimes the sometimes the columns shift, 
and and all of a sudden they get you get pound signs say in this column actually make this bigger you guys probably can't see very much here let's do this okay so you you, you something like this happens and all you get is uh, all you get is pound signs all you have to do is is expand that column a little bit and you'll see it again uh, now, this is a, a big spreadsheet. Some of you guys aren't Alex. So Alex's name is right at the top, right? Easy, no problem. But other people, your names are gonna be farther down. So um, the simplest thing to do is uh, either, in, in the, this, you have this functionality on Google Sheets, you also have this functionality on Excel. What I would recommend you do is you um, freeze pane or freeze is what Google Sheets calls it, but just sort of go into here and um, let's see, something like that. So, so now, oh, sugar cane, hold on, let's do this. Okay, so now I can, I can scroll down and be going all the way down, you know, hundreds of columns below, and I still know that I'm in, in the date column or what have you. Right? So you can turn that on, turn that off. That doesn't affect your data at all. It just is how, it just helps you keep track of stuff. So I'd say the, the numbers thing where people freak out and think that their data is all gone, um, and, uh, which is not. And the, the how, do I, how do I tell where I am uh, navigation wise, uh, the, those two things are completely under your guys' control and just because it doesn't look a certain way, whatever, all the data is protected and good to go. Cool? All right, so let's have a look. Let's start with looking at the example data up here. Um, so, so everybody has, so there's a unique identifier number. This will just help us later if we go to ever sort anything. So each column here has one unique number. So right, but then since you guys are gonna do a total of 40 surveys, everybody, Gesundheit, everybody has 40 slots. So Alex has 37, 38, 39, 40. And then Ruby starts over at number one, two, three, like that, right? So that's just, that's just logistic stuff. Poll version, the one, and the poll version is on the upper left-hand corner of the, of the top sheet of your, of your um, survey instrument. So just have a look. So either, right now, it's either just going to be 13.3 or 13.4. And so I'm just going to type that in. And then your name, your name should be there. The date that you did the survey, the year, which is, should be pretty obvious. 2019, the time, don't forget about the time, it's approximate. You know, if you didn't look at it, you can say like noon or one. It's more just to sort of get a sense of, are we doing this during the, everybody doing it during the lunch hour? Are some people doing it first thing in the morning? Just that kind of thing. And then location, some descriptor. Um, ideally, some, something more than just the store, right? Something that we can have a sense. Because recall, we're trying to make sure that we don't do, um, that you don't do any more than 25 in one particular location because we want to spread out our sampling. And so this is just some descriptor and then the city that it's in and the county. Recall that our, our survey target areas are Santa Barbara, Ventura, or Los Angeles. Okay, so that, that's just sort of the setup. Boom, now we get to go. So if you guys have a look at, it might help if you guys pull out your survey, either one that's already filled out or, or um, a blank one, but pull out a survey. Um, and so every question that we ask or that you guys get asked, there's a first thing here. And this guy says answered. So that's just one or zero. Again, it'll help us in the analysis later on. Um, the reason why we use this, this uh, binary entry code is, is uh, so we can sort things and do that, that kind of stuff later. So one just means yes, zero means didn't do it. Right? So here, in this case, this first person wrote in, and on your first blank, your first survey spot, somebody wrote water, right? And so I would write whatever they put in. So if they, you know, said point magu, P-T-M-A-G-U, I would type in whatever they typed, even though they should have put M-U-G-U, -U, right? Just go ahead and, for now, we'll clean it up at the end, but for now, just put whatever folks put. Okay, and so this says, yes, they gave me some answer. I'm not saying whether it's BS or made up or, you know, maybe they wrote FU or something on there, but, but it's, did they write something is all that says. And so the answer is, yes, they wrote something. What'd they write? Water. If they wrote, if they scribbled something, but you couldn't tell what it said, 
I would say, yes, they answered and just said, can't read it or something, right? That's right. That's right. So this, so this, so this person said water, this person said waves, da, 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 da. This person right here didn't just left that blank. Yeah. What if they put two things? Like, I, I go ahead and put two things in. That's cool. Yeah. So for now, again, after we get all the data entered, we'll do a QA, QC and sort of clean up stuff, like make sure all the MAGUs we turn to MUGUs, that kind of stuff. But for now, this first pass, just go ahead and, and, and enter whatever they, um, whatever they gave you. Um, and so this is important because every single question we're going to get um, likely a different response rate. So some people will answer every single question. Others, either because they don't want to answer that question, because they're confused, because they feel stupid, because they ran out of time and their kid was talking, whatever it is, they, they just didn't uh, give us a response. So it's really, really key. So that, um, a, a, a better example of that would be question number two here. So this is, we're trying we're, a huge landmark event that I'm sure you guys will talk about later in the semester. The 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill, huge, huge. From that, um, you know, that helped start Earth Day, uh, helped give fuel to the Endangered Species Act, the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, the modern suite, most of the modern suite of en federal environmental and state environmental legislation came in the immediate wake of the Coastal Commission, all that stuff. So it was huge, it was a massive, massive event when it comes to coastal management, particularly in California. And so that's what we're looking for. Some people say, you know, people smoked out or there are kind of different things and I don't know, maybe that happened, but, but, but really we're, this question is all about, do people actually know that this event happened? And of course a lot of people won't and that's fine. And so this one, people, somebody said oil spill, someone said river caught on fire, they're thinking about Cuyahoga in Ohio. This person said, I don't know. This person said a bank robbery, the dude, robbed an airplane and jumped out over Oregon and stuff. Anyway, so, so later on we'll go, go through and look at this and say, hmm, did people, did people get the right answer? It's different, right? It's different if we ask how many people that gave us an answer knew, you know, identified the Santa Barbara oil spill or something vaguely close to the Santa Barbara oil spill, right? Versus how many total respondents gave us that answer. And so that's why the one versus, so this one is not the answer we're looking for, but at least they, they made a guess. You get what I'm saying? So we want to be able to know that people were um, either felt positively about a thing or, or correctly identified the whatever, or made a guess, or didn't even guess. And we can't bring, people that didn't even guess, we can't bring that into some of our analysis. So that's why it's important to say they gave us an answer or they didn't give us an answer. So every single question has a, they answered or didn't answer it. Okay, and in this case, because they didn't answer it, there's nothing we would type in. We wouldn't say empty, we wouldn't say blank, we wouldn't say skipped, it would just be blank. Okay, then we get to our first question. So if you, the, then you start, our third question is the first one that has like the tick boxes, okay? Basically, for most of these questions, there's a few that are a little bit different, but most of these, it's very simple. So all it's gonna say is number three, did they answer it? Yes, this person answered question number three, so I put a one there, and then they ticked uh, that wetlands have declined. So I put a one there, which, it, which would be the equivalent of a check, and the other ones, zeros, because they didn't pick that. Make sense? The next person did the same thing, they said decreased. This person didn't answer that question. So again, I put a zero there and leave the rest blank, and then, and then so on and so forth. Is that cool? Now, for most of these questions, we say, hey, what did it do? In this case, it's wetlands. Did it, was it A, B, C, or D? And, and so they really are supposed to pick one. Maybe somebody screwed up and they ticked two things. Maybe they did that. Maybe they said it increased and decreased. So if that's what they put, you should, you should type in exactly what they put. But then I would just go into my cells there and I would, um, I would just highlight the whole thing yellow. So when it comes to later on, when we're QA, QCing the data, we're like, ooh, there's something, we'll probably leave that data out, probably, of the analysis, because I can't tell that they say bigger or, or less, right? So, and then we just go through the same way. So they say, you know, they, which one they tick, which one they tick, boom, 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 boom. 
and it just goes all the way like that. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, the order that you guys have here, so um, mostly they're a single line thing, is the order that they are, the order on your, on your responses are the, is the order that they're in here. Sometimes we have a couple of them. Let's see, what's the first one? The first one would be um, uh, like number 15 that is on multiple lines. It goes, let's look at that. 15, 15, 15. That dude, that dude. So the first one is, did they use a newspaper? And, th and this, this question says mark all that apply. So in this case, people might use multiple sources. So they, they could maybe you know, say none of them or all of them. And so in this case, the first one, the first option is newspaper, next one is magazine, next one is TV, next one's radio, next one's internet news site, and then it just scrolls to the next column down. And then uh, keeps going like that. And then in this case, there's an other, right? So this person said other, but they didn't tell us what it was. They, sh they should have, ideally they would have written something in. In this case, this person says, I use some other source of information for my news, and they use press releases. So then I would go to this this bot, this uh, blank here, and I type in whatever they jotted down in that thing. Does that make sense? Okay. And there's just a couple uh, ones that are a little bit different. And if we look at the first one, is actually before this one. The first one is number 13. And so this one says rank, right? So we want to say which of these four things, which one's the greatest threat, which one's the second greatest threat, which one. And so it's just like before, did they answer it, yes or no? If they answered it, it's a, it's a one. And then this person thought this is one, this is four, okay. So you're gonna type in whatever, again, whatever they say. That, that's ideally how they do it. Sometimes people go, they'll tick and they'll, write, they'll put a check mark by pollution and they'll leave the rest blank. And so what do you do with that? So I would put a, I would put a one on pollution and put, and then leave the rest blank and just highlight that whole row yellow because we, again we have to go back and, and, and when we do the final data cleaning up we'll probably toss that one out right or if they had typed a one a four and a two and they left the three blank we it, we could probably guess that was a, would have been a three so sometimes we can we can reasonably guesstimate what they were thinking but otherwise we'll just sort of cut that out of the final analysis does that make sense uh, and then a couple other ones just to flag for you uh, that are maybe a little bit different are, um, are the, 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 the which one? What about the charts? Wh wh which, which number are you talking about? Any of the charts. Like, how are like 32 or something? Sure. So if we look at, let's see, look at, look at 32. So 32, here it goes right here. So here it goes. So the first one is uh, should we rebuild after the Woolsey fire. And again, just like before, the first option is, um, is did they answer it? And then this person ticked, they weren't sure. So again, they didn't say all, they didn't say majority, they didn't say part, they didn't say none, they said unsure. So they just enter it like that. And the next row is 12B, like that. So, on, on 32, it says the correct response to these coastal disasters was slash is. I didn't understand that. And then, you know, I, I, I understood that we're, we're really asking for these areas to shift Yes. So you're saying you, you don't like the wording of it? Well, I didn't understand what that, the correct response for this. What's that mean? So what should we do? So one of the things we hear a lot after New Orleans, after the campfire, or people say, why are those stupid people rebuilding that super dangerous place is the idea. And so, and so generally what we've found is um, after the, after the disaster, everybody wants to help people get, get safe after, like when they're, people are homeless and don't have water and stuff. But after the week or two goes by and we've done the initial, you know, the heroes have gone in and been heroes, that then we start to get to the hard parts, right? And so, so that's where a lot of the policy comes into play. And so um, we started asking this question because about 12 years ago, there was this big fire in Malibu. And I was doing some work on Malibu Lagoon. And so I was down in Malibu. And it was early, so I went to this coffee shop to, shop to get a coffee. And this is um, two years after Katrina had happened. 
and the city of New Orleans was, you know, hugely decimated and everything. And uh, uh, there was some uh, relatively wealthy ladies in front of me, waiting to get their, their coffee. And they were saying um, how horrible the rebuilding was going for the city of New Orleans. And why are those, those, those people rebuilding their homes under when it, their uh, elevation is below sea level? 60% of the city is not below sea level, but that's another story. And most of the city was, virtually all of the city was above sea level when it was built. It's been sinking because we've been pumping water and oil and gas and other things. That's, that's a whole other story. So anyway, so they, they were saying, oh, these stupid people, why would they rebuild? It's just, it's such, I feel sorry for those folks, but we should really just, you know, fish and cut bait and go on. And then it was a long line. And so then, you know, slowly getting up to the front. And this is just after this big fire had happened. It wasn't as, as big as the Woolsey fire, but it hit intensely in um, sort of the heavily populated area, the core of Malibu. And uh, some of these ladies' homes had unfortunately burned up, which sucks, right? It doesn't matter if you're super rich or super poor, it just sucks when, and it's horrible when you lose all your stuff and everything. And so this, these ladies started talking. It was obvious that uh, two of the three of them had lost their homes, like, like completely or, or, or essentially completely. And so they went from this conversation about those stupid poor people in New Orleans that shouldn't be rebuilding to their house. And this one lady said, so are you, um, so how's your, are you going to rebuild? Ah, oh, hell yeah, she said. Of course we're rebuilding. We're getting the plans tomorrow. So this gets to a really important thing when we talk about risk and we think about all of these coastal management challenges. When it's in our backyard, we tend to be really, and we'll see if this is the case. We'll, we'll see what people think now. But historically, what we've seen is when it's far away, it's, mm, I feel really bad, but those people shouldn't be doing that because that just doesn't make sense. When it's us, it's like, well, what, what, you know, what are you talking about? We, of course we should rebuild, right? When it's paradise, when it's when it's whatever, and so so that's what that question is really trying to get at is is the clo the farther we get from us, are we still interested? Are people as supportive of rebuilding completely, or are they are they? So it's really it's a relative question here. So what we're really we're doing is sort of internally comparing. I guess what I thought was it was two questions. You know, that first part of the sentence, and then the filling out the chart. You know what I mean? That after the first um, colon, there should be a uh, response, and then you also fill out the chart. But it's really like one sentence. Uh, you mean, you, so you'd rather like take out the text and the, the, the second block of text, you mean? I think that'd be clean, clearer? Or take out, no, the first part. Maybe the first part or make it all one sentence. You mean for these areas we should rebuild? Well, uh, take out the first, the correct response. Which, uh, she, disaster which it looks like she's supposed to, she, I think she's saying it looks like you're supposed to fill in. Like it's a different question than this oh. is. Oh, okay. You mean like, so you like, like a colon rather than a fill in the blank kind of thing? Oh, I see. Um, yeah, we can change if you guys want. If you guys want to propose some specific changes, we can. But this is the way we've been doing it for several years, okay. and it hasn't doesn't and seem to really cause any confusion. But it, but absolutely, if you guys want to make some suggestions, we could think about okay. modifying stuff. Okay. Um, uh, okay there, there are a few things that are a little bit different. So one is, um, for example, people said, "What's what? What age do you first go to the um, beach, or, or, or uh, at what age did you first go to the beach or the ocean?" So we're looking for years, you know, age there. How, but some of these people will say, I was a baby or when I was a kid. And again, for this first pass, just, just put in whatever they said, and then we'll, we'll adjust that. Another one is where we ask the question, um, we say that, um, let's see, where, the next one, the seafood question is um, 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 number 22. So we we'll look at question 22. Look at question 22. It says, um, uh, okay, over the past week, the past seven days, how, many, how, many, how much seafood have you eaten? And we say, hey, and we ask in ounces because that's what people seem to be more comfortable. We've tried different things at different times. But it says, hey, just so you know, a deck of cards is about three ounces, just to give people some kind of rough idea. And so then, how, how approximately X ounces? Some people will say a pound, right? 
or something different. So, so if they just put a number, if they just put three, let's assume that they meant three ounces, they follow the instructions. And so I just type in the number three or whatever. If they said four pounds, um, you have two options. So the best thing would be for you to go to your calculator and convert pounds to ounces and then type in whatever the correct ounces is. But if you're just rushing and you don't want to deal with that, you can go ahead and type in four space P-O-U-N-D-S or four space L-B-S and we can convert it later. But it is fairly common people will, will use type in their own units in there. So for now, again, this first pass, just, just put in whatever they say and then we go do our cleaning. We'll go and clean that up. Um, but have a note. So this really, this really highlights the reason why we do the ones and the zeros. So this person said, yeah, I, I heard you. I answered your question. I ate absolutely no seafood over this last week. So they put in either N-O-N-E or zero, right? So the, so the answer is zero. This person here just left it blank. So maybe they meant to indicate zero, but we can't assume that, right? So you can imagine if we did the average, you know, what, what's the average amount of seafood that's been consumed this past week by people in Ventura County in whatever, September and October of this year, you get very, very different answers if we had, um, if we included the zeros or didn't include the zeros, right? Does that make sense? Okay, and then, um, yeah, and then the very last one that will cause some confusion is the one that is 43. So 43, every other year we have a long list of these things. So this is actually entered slightly differently. Oh, sorry. And, 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 and just to highlight on the, the one about the correct response, I made this orange just to be clear. If you guys have, have, have a survey 13.3, this should be skipped entirely. You shouldn't put a zero, they didn't answer it. They didn't even not answer it, right? Because they didn't see that. So that one would be all, would be all blank. If you guys had, to me, this, this, should we rebuild the Bahamas and you had survey 13.3, that would not be entered, that would, nothing would be typed in there. Yeah? Okay, and then if it was, if we had, if you guys have the 13.4 going forward um, and they didn't answer it, you would put in a, you type in a zero here, right? If they didn't answer it. Does that make sense? So I just flagged that so you guys, it, it, it's a little different color. Um, anyway, sorry, so we're talking about question 43. So for this one, this one is weird. So this one, so that you guys compare to with all of our data, uh, this guy you're gonna do some complex things. Okay, so this, this first part is just like before. Did we answer it, yes or no? Yep, they gave me an answer, cool. And uh, all we're doing here is instead of doing a tick box in the very negative or, or positive or whatever, we're gonna put a number. So for very negative, that's minus two. For negative, that's minus one. For neutral, that's zero. For positive, that's one. For very positive, that's a positive two. And again, it's, it's a little confusing now, but when we get to the analysis, you'll, you'll see why this will help you. And so the idea is, are people generally positive about this? People generally negative about this? Um, and, uh, da, 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 da. and so, and so this guy, so this guy, did they answer it? Yep. And this person said they were positive. So I put a one. Yeah. What about the I don't know? Oh. Right. So the I don't know is the unsure. So the I don't know is they didn't give us any numerical assessment. So they don't, so, so they didn't skip it. They didn't skip it, but they said, I don't know. So in that case, in that case, it looks like this guy. So they answered it, but they didn't give us, there was no score, but it was unsure. What if they skipped the whole thing? They skipped the whole thing, then it would be like this guy. It would be zero. Not blank. Yeah, so, so, so they, didn't, they didn't answer it. So it would be zero, and you would skip it. So if they didn't answer it at all, this guy would get a zero. This would be blank. This would be blank. So again, if it's confusing, look up at the example. I think it'll make it clear. And if not, you guys can always ask me and I can help you. And so when we break, I want you guys to try to enter one here. And then I'm sure you guys will have some questions. I can answer your questions now. 
But in general, we're going to go through this. You guys are going to do this, right? You're going to type it in, tick, 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 and then save it, right? So you just on your local, this is in Excel, it's on your local drive. Save it, save it, save it. And then at some point when, it's when we have a deadline coming up or whatever, first 20, what have you, you can go and you can just select all of these dudes, jump over to that Google sheet, go to the respective row and just hit paste and boom, it's all in there, right? So you, you still have your sheet, so your original sheet doesn't get contaminated by anybody that might accidentally delete something or do, do something like that. And then, so my encouragement is as you guys are pulling in these surveys, be entering them into your Excel file, right? That night when you're watching TV or listening to something, or, right? Just sort of get it done a little bit at a time. And it's not too bad if you guys do it like that. If you wait till the hour before everything's due, then you're gonna, you know, start having stomach cramps and you're gonna be all upset and freaking out and all that kind of jazz. Um, the other thing that we didn't talk about last time that I just wanted to flag for you guys, because again, recall, um, we'll talk about in a second about how your, how your guys' experiences have gone so far. But when you're doing this, hey, um, yeah, I'm in this class from, at Cal State Channel Islands and we're doing, a, uh, we're doing a class assignment and we're looking at people's opinions and awareness of different things in the coastal zone. Would you mind taking a survey for me? Boom, okay, great, cool, thanks. I start going through the survey. Oh, I feel so stupid, I feel like I should, no, it's all good. It's, it's, it's not like that. Totally anonymous. Just, you know, if there's something you just totally confuse it, go ahead and skip that question and go on the next one. Don't worry about it. We're not, this isn't a test, right? But if they say something like, oh, I feel so stupid. So this one about the wetlands, blah, 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 blah. I have to say, I, I'm happy to talk to you about it afterwards, but to not bias your results, I can't give you any specific info. But if you want to ask me some questions after, I'm more than happy to, to talk about it, right? So we really don't want to engage them in anything um, specific, because we might unintentionally change their, their opinion or, or their response. Okay, but a couple things, and I've, I've made them red here, just so you guys can flick through and see this. Um, when, you when you do survey, or when we have these, who's gonna win the presidential election, and all this and that, right? You always hear 75% uh, of the American public think blah, blah, blah. And then after, in the graphic, or at the, in the, middle of the text of the story or whatever, then they'll say, oh, this poll has an error of 3%, right? A lot of that's BS. They're using, so someone has done some kind of comparative study, who knows, five years ago with this technique. And they found in that context, in that year, with that thing, that their, their, their poll deviated maybe 3% on average or, or however they measured it, right? And then, that polling institution just said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep calling it 3%, right? That is um, not the only reason, but that's one of the reasons why perhaps some of our polling was so off in the last presidential election, right? So what we do in all of our polls, we have internal, I mean, there's always other sources of error, but, but one thing we do is we always try to check what our error rate is. There's a few responses in here. They're not meant to be intentionally deceptive, but we have some things that aren't true in here. And so those things, so if we look at, for example, question number 36, have you ever heard of these things? Um, all of these things that are uh, black are real, but then uh, the things that are red are made up. And it's the same with the agencies. There's a couple of made up agencies, right? So most people will say, I've never heard of those things. And that's cool. Occasionally, someone will say they've heard of those. That doesn't mean they were stupid. That doesn't mean, that, well, it could mean a couple of things. It could mean they weren't paying attention. They were trying to jam through the survey and they weren't reading it too closely, which is a source of error, right? That's one way to get error. The other is they were not trying to be deceptive or rushing. They just thought they had heard something that sounded familiar to something that they, that they had uh, experienced or, or seen. Either way, it doesn't matter. Either way, that it's not, there is no, those are all completely made up things. So if they, if they check a box, that's a way for us to check um, one possible source of error. So every time we do a survey, we have our own uh, minimum measure of error in there, right? So we always have some way to check if, if people are just jamming through the super quick or, if, or, or what have you. And so um, 
you just might want to spin through that because it might happen that someone at the end of it, they give it back to you and they might want to ask you a couple questions. So have wetlands decreased? And your answer is yes, they've decreased by 91% in California. We, we have the state with the greatest wetland loss in the nation. <clears throat> Not quantity, but proportion of loss. Um, uh, but but it, it might, I don't think it's ever really happened, but in theory it might happen. Someone said, hey, so, so tell me about Dolph, Dolphine. That's a nice Dolphine say. <laughs> Jesus. I think it's spelled correctly on the, uh, yes. on the thing. Oh my God, that's horrible. <laughs> Some idiot was making this data sheet up at late at night, clearly. So, um, but, but so, so, right? So they say, you know, and I know you guys haven't learned about these things yet, so if that's the case, say, you know, we haven't really covered that yet in class. We're going to talk about it later. But some of the stuff you probably have a sense of dolphin safe, the, the tuna sa ways of fishing that are less impactful on, on marine mammals, right? But if they were to say, hey, what's up this ninth hour thing? Oh, it's not, it's not, there, there's no such ninth hour thing. So just, just so you guys know, just that, that, uh, that's what the couple things that are read in there. Um, we analyze them just like everything else, but just, just so you know for your own, as we go through the data later on, if you guys want to check your error rate and stuff, that's what that is. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So, um, bueno. So that is how we're editing stuff. So um, I wanted to give you guys a few minutes. Uh, so we, we're going to discuss how you, your techniques and approaches to doing the surveys. But that's going to be it for today after we do that. I'd encourage you guys to hang out for a couple minutes and try to download the data sheet and just start entering some data so you guys can ask me some questions. Hey, am I doing this right, et cetera. The last thing is my suggestion with these paper surveys, because remember at the end and whatever is a month or whatever when we're done, you guys are gonna turn these in. We have to legally hold these for a year or two, whatever it is. So my suggestion for you guys is here, I, I gave my survey to this lady at the Starbucks or whatever, right? And she did her thing. She gives it back to me. I'm just gonna jot down the date. I'd probably also jot down the time. Just, I mean, so it's easier. But then when I go home that, that day, I'm gonna take, let's say I did five that day. Go ahead and just, I would take a, a, a pen and just write number one, next one, number two, three, four, and keep them in order. That way, because every once in a while we have a problem either because there's some typo when you were typing it in or there's some question or whatever. So we'll be going through this like, oh, uh, Alex is number 15. I'm like, I can't, is that, they really say that? Is that right? And we can go back to his stack, his paper stack, and flick, I mean, in theory, you can go back if you don't put the numbers down, but it takes forever, right? Whereas this way, if it's number 15, you can just flick through to the stack number 15. We can flick to it and go, oh, no, actually, no, I accidentally, I typed a, so you can type the wrong number in there. I should have typed in whatever. It just helps us with organizing. So you don't have to do that, but it makes it a lot easier on you guys to just, um, number your surveys as you're, as you're entering them kind of thing. And then the other one I would probably just jot down is uh, because you're going to be doing them in different places. In addition, to, uh, we put today's date on there because we don't, it, it's kind of a little weird when we give somebody a, uh, we say this is an anonymous survey. Here you go. And they give it back to you and you start writing a bunch of stuff on it, right? It kind of freaks them out like, what? So you don't have to do it that moment, but maybe before you leave that restaurant or that car wash or that beach or whatever it is, I would just sit there and write, you know, did, this was at the collection on this date and, and just make sure that stuff's all good so that you're not trying to remember, you know, two weeks later where you did that survey, et cetera. Cool? Yeah. Another 10. 10. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, that's a good question. Okay. So yeah. So for that one, just put in the number. Same with ounces. Just go ahead and put in the number unless it's something like they put pounds or something. The other one, just to note, just to make sure we're clear, if we look over, if we look over, if we look over, if we look over here, so this is all military time, right? So don't put in, if you did it at four o'clock, don't put in four colon zero zero, make it 16 colon zero zero. Yeah. So I would, I would just, I would say the answer and just put 100%. We might have to call that when we do the analysis, but for now, just go ahead and say they answered it. And then another weird one, uh, like. Oh, but, oh, oh, just a note, if it's something, if it's something weird, remember after you type it in, you know it's weird, just go and highlight the thing yellow. And it's just easier for us when we're flipping through to, to jump to it, but yeah.
Uh, call it California. As long as you're in our California for a little bit, that's cool. Can you offer a suggestion when someone says, how are you going to use this data? Yeah, so the answer is um, we use it in our class. And um, every several years, we generate a report for, um, for public agencies and, and for sharing on our websites and stuff. So anonymized, everything's anonymized. So we don't ever identify the person or the you know, uh, specific location. But it helps us understand, um, for example, how much seafood people are eating. It helps us understand how frequently people go to the national parks or go to our <coughs> beaches and things of that nature. So we share it with um, anybody that's interested. And so if they want a copy of our data, right? Um, again, so you can just give them another copy of this or you can just rip off the fr front page of one of these and they can have my email address and just say, you know, after October, they're, they're more than, you know, more than happy if they want to send us an email, they can, we can, we'll share that with them if they're curious. Okay. So it's not, it's not, it's not meant to be proprietary. It's meant to help us better understand what our citizens, how they behave in some cases, like what, what, how much money they spend, et cetera. But also for us to get a better sense of um, how supportive they are of different things that go on in the coastal zone. So it's really, it's really for public consumption. Oh, that's all good. It's all good. So, and it, that, that will happen. So, you'll get tourists. You'll get like somebody from Germany. You'll, my, my zip code is 7Z714, right? And you're like, what? So, just put it, that, that's all good because they're, they're um, here. So, we're doing the surveys in these locations. But okay. the people could be coming from San Luis Obispo, they could be coming from Kern County. That's all good. It's just our geographic grab is in this particular area. Oh, okay. So, it's all, it's all good no matter where people are from. And you said you wanted. At least 10 from outside Ventura County. Okay. So you could do all 40 outside Ventura County. That's cool. But because most people do them very close to campus, we end up getting everybody Oxnard, Camarillo kind of thing. And we, we want to have a bit more of a random grab of things. So, um, so that, that's all. It's just, it's just, it's just a, a, at least a fourth from outside of Ventura County. Okay. That could be Agura Hills. That could be Carpinteria, right? It's just so we get outside of the core of... And so last question to go with that is, say, um, if I go do my surveys in LA, do I necessarily have to be along? No, 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 no. Can I no. be in like Burbank? Nope. You can be anywhere inside the county uh, county uh, uh, boundary. So you could be in Santa Clarita. You could be in uh, you could be in San Ynez Valley. You could be in Hollywood. By no means do you have to be at the coast. You do, you do not have to be at the beach. The only requirement is that you guys are in some, some publicly accessible space. So we don't want to go to a, a private home and be inside somebody's private home backyard. Um, but, you know, so, so parks, so uh, mail. Okay, yeah, so, so we'll actually we'll get back to that when we talk about how your strategy. But the answer is, yeah, anywhere in the county boundary is cool. And ideally, the more different the better, right? Because we want to sort of spread out. Yeah. You said you wanted to target Focus Santa Barbara, Ventura, and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Is it strictly those, or yes, okay. yes, yes? Yeah, just so so we can year over year have the same same area. So the idea is not to have you guys go drive all the way down to San Diego and and all that jazz. Yeah. Uh, just approximate. approximate. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like, so, so what do you, so the time, you know, date, you should probably know the date, a pro, uh, about one o'clock is fine, but location, like, where'd you do them? Starbucks. Yeah, just, just, just say Starbucks and Ventura, and like, then. I, I mean, like, the address. I'm oh, no, 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 you, know, you don't need to give me the address. Okay. It, it's, just, it's just that, that just helps, because in the case of Starbucks, there's like a thousand million Starbucks, right? And so it's like, oh, shit, you know. So it's just so that we can, at the end, when we go and look at them, we can know that not everybody went to the same exact place. You know what I'm saying? So don't, you don't need to, do not feel like you need to look up an address or anything like that. Again, um, uh, I, mean, I was going to say, like you said, you want it, you, you don't want it in this county, in LA, or you don't want it outside LA, like other in California, but outside. 
Yes, so it should be in somewhere within the boundaries of Santa Barbara County, somewhere within the boundaries of Ventura County, or somewhere within the boundaries of Los Angeles County is where you're doing the survey. People could be from wherever, um, but, but where, you're, where you're giving them the piece of paper, it should be in one of those three counties. Does not need to be immediately at the coast by any means. Doesn't have to be at the beach by any means. Um, so yeah, cool. Other questions, or should we talk about strategies for surveying? I have one little yeah. um, announcement. So when we were all putting our certificates in at the very beginning, when we just started putting them in, mm -hmm. I took mine off because I wanted to put my name, name the file the right way, and I deleted someone. So uh, that's okay. ruined my research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine was deleted. So, that, so it's all good. That's why I just say, so the Google Drive is really cool. It's just sometimes people accidentally do stuff. So that's why it's always good just to save your copy. And then if we're looking in, like, dude, where is your certificate or where is your five surveys? They're like, talk to me. And you're like, no, you didn't. Like, what? And so it's all good. You can just go repost them in or re, re edit it. Yeah. So if you're in the folder already, that means you already have the certificate. You don't have to send it. Right. Right. That's how you had to send it to you. No, it's all, it's all good. So I, I think it automatically sends it to our um, research office, but it's kind of hard to get info from them. So it's just easier you guys to put it in there than Sean will just go through and check it off. Okay, good. So bueno, okay, so let's have a quick talk and then um, I'll turn you guys loose. But uh, so uh, approaches, so where do people try to do their surveys? Starbucks. Starbucks. Is it successful? Yeah. Okay, so, so star oh, institution, yes, when people are drinking beer, that tends to work well. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not encouraging you to go alcohol <laughs> place, I'm just saying. Any place where someone's gonna be sitting for a while. Yeah. So, so maybe a beer place, maybe a coffee place, what are some other ideas people uh -huh, a park yeah. yeah yeah people are sitting there that's great or or their kids are playing and they're just sort of vegging out that's great other good ones we've yeah sure 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 any other ones waiting for a table at lure <laughs> yeah yeah so the, yeah so anywhere where people are waiting is pretty good one that seems to have worked well for some people not everybody of course but some people is um you know, not, not the like get in your car and go through the car wash, but the car wash where you get out of your car and it goes through. So your people are stuck there for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. That, that tends to be a high value or what do they call it? Target rich environment kind of thing. The other thing I would suggest you guys do, and so the, you know, the first, this first couple are, you know, is, you know, you're just trying it out and getting your, getting your routine down. But now that you guys, once you guys, you know, get that under control, I would strongly recommend you guys get several clipboards instead of going out with one clipboard and one pen because I give it to you know one one person and then she's taking it and then I'll and it invariably happens when nobody is around you're like oh, I don't have these clipboards but then all of a sudden oh, oh man boom and then crap all these people come walking in you're like oh, are you done yet are you done yet so if you have you know two or three clipboards you could be kind of a bang ba bang ba bang and, and it goes way faster. Um, you guys are welcome. We have clipboards you can um, check out from Emily. I mean, you don't need to check them out, but, but, it, but if you don't have clipboards and you want some, we have a, a bunch of clipboards you guys could, could check out for you know, a week, a couple weeks. Um, and, then, and then multiple um, um, writing instruments. So you know, a clipboard with a pen or pencil on each, on each uh, one that usually tends to go fast. Um, another one that sometimes happens is so there's uh, Oh, I don't know, a bunch of, a, a group of friends coming through or a bunch of moms with their kids or something coming through and you're like, hey, would you mind I'm in this class? I have this horrible professor and he makes us do these surveys. He's such an asshole. Can you, do you mind taking a survey, right? And sometimes people are like, yeah, no, thanks. You're like, damn. But then sometimes you get that, that pack of moms or that pack of friends are coming in. You're like, hey, like, yeah, can I have one? Can I have one? Can I have one? And it's okay to give it to multiple ones, but they have to make sure they're doing it independently, right? So if they're like super party folks and they're talking, we, right, just like everything else we want, the whole idea of this is independence, right? An independent grab of what our, or what the general public thinks. We should be getting rich people, we should be getting poor people, we should be getting short people, we should be getting tall people, we should be getting everybody, right? So, so all these folks we should be targeting. And if we, if we tend to you know, give it to 10 people that are all buds, right? That's, that's gonna have a, on average, on average, I'm not 
accusing those 10 people of doing anything nefarious, but on average, those 10 people, because they're friends, they're probably gonna tend to think more similarly um, to one another than to the random total breadth of all the people that live in our three counties, right? So just keep that in mind. So we're really trying to get, you know, I'm not trying to make you guys do more work or, or drive far away, but the idea is we want independence. We want, we want independent grabs. We want, and, and the more grabbing we do, I shouldn't say that, the more, uh, the more independent sampling we do of people, right, the more robust our, our data is and the better this is and more helpful to folks. So as a reminder, we originally just did this just as a class exercise. It wasn't for anybody. This wasn't to share. This wasn't to give out. It wasn't anything. But our, our partners, park service, county government, different agencies, they're desperate to know this information. They don't have the resources to go out and, and survey people. What do you think about climate change? Or what do you, how often do you visit our parks? So this is actually, what you guys are doing is really, is truly, really, really valuable and helpful. And so, so we're not just doing it for the sake of doing it, we're doing it so you guys learn and we're trying to be a, have a real honest look at what our, what our community thinks about these things or how they, how they behave. And so again, there is no, well, there's a few things that are objectively like what percentage is wetland what percentage of our wetlands have been lost but by and large it's just what do you think what's your perception of how much of our wetland ecosystem has changed right so that's really what we're asking cool what, what is or no? so um we historically have done this in spanish and english to be completely honest things massively changed in 2016. so in fact, I don't even have any students doing capstone. We, we've done some surveys, especially our seafood survey. We've, I've had students do independent projects where we do the same exact survey in an English speaking market or restaurant, and then right down the street in a Spanish speaking um, restaurant or market um, given by a native Spanish speaker from that community in total, total span in, you know pure Spanish and everything. Um, things have changed after 2016. We can it's almost impossible to get um, many Spanish speakers to take a survey. There, there's a huge amount of fear out there, and we've, we've um, sort of put that on pause for now, because it's, it, it's beyond the scope of our class. It, you know, we're not trying to make you guys do work for weeks and weeks and weeks, but it's, it's a real issue. It's, it's a real, real honest issue. Um, but uh, unfortunately, our, uh, as everybody probably knows, our Spanish-speaking community is, is um, feeling very uncomfortable with people collecting information about them now. And so even if somebody looks like them, speaks their language, there's still a huge amount of aversion. And so it just, it's, we can't seem to do it now. So hopefully things will get better in the next couple of years, but um, it, we used to is the answer. How did you lock that one line again? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is, so there's a couple of different, uh, if you're in Excel, um, it, it'll depend, and you can, depend on what version of Excel, Mac PC, there's either called split or freeze. Um, so you can use either of those. On, um, on Google Docs, it's just called, it's under view, I believe, and it's just called a freeze. Split or freeze, where do I find that though? Freeze pane. So, so you first have to click on something, like either a row or a cell, okay. and then go up. And I, I'll, I can show you guys in your individual version. I can show you guys. Um, but, but, but before you do that, I'm going to turn you guys loose so you can, if you want to try entering some data now, you can answer questions. But other, other challenges, so do people try, so what, how, what was the most successful approach people had? Any phrasings that you guys like to use? No? Uh, do you guys, anybody wear any CSUCI stuff? No. Yes? <laughs> A few people? No? Any other? Any other? question. The other one, you guys should have a note. You don't have to count every single person. But at the end end, we are going to ask, how many people did you guys ask that said no? So we, we do want to have a, a vague sense of the, of the um, decline rate. So you don't have to be sitting there with a tally every single time. But, but you might want at the end of your day, just you know, the first day, you're kind of practicing. But after your first day, and you got your, your spiel down and your, your technique, you should keep a little tally. Oh, I tried, you know, 15 people today I asked and they said F you or whatever, right? And so, so we just want a, a vague sense of, of the decline rate. Do you like want us to put their comments like if they left a blank between any or something like comment? Do you 
Oh, sorry, right, yeah, good question. If you guys scroll all the way to the far, far right. Farthest, far, far right, far, far, far okay. There, there's a general comments thing. So yeah, so if they, if they wrote something longer in that response that was relevant, you can go ahead and put that in. A lot of times it's not super relevant, but if you think you want to capture that, you can go in here and you can say on the comment, you can put on question 14, they wrote in this, this sentence. So we can capture that. Or like here, for example, uh, seems like a nice old grandpa, asked me lots of questions. This other one seemed distracted by her small baby and skipped the demographic question, right? So just stuff like that helps us. Again, this is all you guys, you're doing your 40 surveys, right? But you are all using everybody's data. Right? So you guys are doing a collective look at what's going on. And so anything that might help somebody who wasn't you interpret this data, you don't have to put a comment in, but if you think it might help, go ahead and type it in there. So again, like Fidel saying, it could be a specific comment on a specific question, but it could also be, uh, you know, seem distracted by her, her small baby or whatever, right? So you go, oh, okay, so it wasn't that, it wasn't that when Fidel was typing in that he just spaced out and didn't, didn't put anything on the, on the last 10 questions. It was that her phone rang and she you know, d had to go or something. So anything that would help somebody, imagine like 10 years from now, somebody looking at this data and they're saying, hmm. Uh, so again, you have to write a novel, but anything that would, that would help with either one particular question or the general attitude, the person was telling me that the world's gonna end tomorrow and that surveys are stupid and they were just randomly, he said, I'm just randomly gonna check stuff, right? Like, okay, well maybe we should toss that one out of the analysis, that kind of thing. So that comment is, you can put as much, you can type as much stuff in there and it could be a general thing or it can be, um, or it could be, uh, uh, you know, about a specific question. We just wanna make sure we don't get any kind of identifying information. 